Uh, hello. So we have a problem with uh, cow file systems with respect to memory usage. And uh, this is primarily for shared extents. I'll just give a full steam of what shared extents are all about. So if you have two files which are sharing uh, an extent, uh, this could happen due to, say, clone file range, snapshots, or uh, reflinks. So a normal copy operation with reflinks. So you can have shared extents where files, file inodes point to the same block, uh, blocks in the device. And here in this example, you have file one with two extents, E1 and E2, E2 being three blocks, and file two being E1 and E2, and E2, again, with three blocks being shared. But when you read it into memory, uh, it basically each file reads it individually, which basically means you'll have two copies of the second extent for both file one and file two, with basically page two, page three, page four being uh, read twice. So this is not just about memory, it's also about the, the effort or the cost involved of reading it from the disk. So like with ButterFS, you'll have additional cost of checksums or decompression and things like that. So uh, my idea is to start with having a device or cache altogether. I hate to call it the buffer cache because it'll give you nightmares, but uh, let's just call it the read device cache, which kind of sits in between the device and the, uh, and the, and the page cache. So for each, let's, I have different operations like read, write, direct IO, and uh, MMAP. So starting with the simplest ones, uh, the buffered read would first check the inode page cache. This is primarily done because in case you've read something and written to it, so first you check the inodes page cache. Then uh, probably in read page callback itself, you convert the offset to device offset. Of course, if it is not found in the regular page cache, you convert read offset to de device offset and then check it in the read cache first before going to disk. Uh, in buffered write, the situation will be a little different. It was always performed in inodes eye mapping and uh, so if there is a situation where you have to read, say if you're doing a partial write for a, for a page, you have to read it from disk. You first check in the read cache before going to disk and reading the page altogether. The harder ones are the direct IO. Basically, with respect to reads, the, uh, it kind of defeats the purf purpose of direct IO because direct IO basically means that you have, uh, you don't have it in page cache, but we are having a uh, disk cache altogether for, for, for your uh, inode pages. Uh, if there is a write, it would first need to check if there's something in the read cache and use those pages. When I say pulls the pages, it has to delete it from the read cache and then pull it out. Uh, anything better? Yeah, I know these ideas may be pretty outrageous. Uh, I, 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 I keep making the same mistake that, that you're making here, and, and Dave Chenna keeps setting me straight. Uh, when, when you're doing a direct IO read, you actually have to do, go to the disk and get it to do a read. And there's a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that there is such a th thing still as shared storage, and okay. so you actually need to read what the other machine wrote rather than yes. what you've got in your cache. Right. And the other is that some workloads are doing this to save CPU. So rather than the CP have the CPU do a mem copy, they actually want to go to the drive and they want the DMA to happen because to that application, CPU is more important than uh, bus bandwidth. Yeah, but uh, first of all, to answer your question on shared storage, uh, I believe that will partly be with respect to cluster locking or something of that sort. So yes, in your this case, it will probably have to be invalidated uh, across the cluster. But for, uh, for other reasons, I cannot say much. Yeah, MMAP is sort of a gray area for me. So I'm, I'm really not sure if, uh, if this would be the right, uh, right way to go ahead. So 
it starts with a read-only shared mapping, like we have regular sh VM shared uh, objects, and if there is a write, it goes through the write copy on write page, and we we use it for the uh, for writing on an M map page. So when I started off with this, I I said uh, we'll we'll put it in BDI node, but which is the backing device of the super block. But eventually, that may not be such a good idea, primarily because, uh, uh, like, ButterFS has multiple uh, devices. Not only that, we also uh, have things like compression or something, which would basically keep things up, up scale. So adding, uh, really suggested of adding a special inode altogether for shared inode, or we could stick it in the super block, however it works out. So. I have a couple of questions which we could we could think about for discussion. First of all, things like first of all, I know it's pretty outrageous with respect to having the whole reads, all reads into the read cache. So probably the reads would have to be differentiated, uh, whether it's a shared extent or not. So should we read the entire reads into the cache, or should we just have shared? Uh, shared extents into the cache, the read cache. Uh, so the way I envisioned doing this is that we just, we, we have yet another special inode that does this. And for ButterFS specifically, it's just mapped to our logical byte number addressing. So it's not tied to the, the block device itself, right. it's tied to our internal logical address right. space. And then from there, it's an inode. Like the, the OM and all that stuff, it doesn't become a problem because uh, like, the MM will come along and tell us to evict pages, and we'll evict pages. Yeah, so that part yeah. is taken care of. I think that I, death to all mount options, like this just happens. Yeah. Uh, um, so yeah. This, so that, that answers one of another questions, whether it should be a mount option or not. We should directly put it as a file system. Yeah, um, it, it should always work. And I think, for at least for ButterFS, I think we want to always cache reads because you never know when you're going to snapshot. Yes, because you can always, like, if there is a read cache already, mm -hmm. you can always have call clone file range later on, yeah. and then it'll become an, a shared extent automatically. Right, and I think for the odirect case, you know, Will, you bring up a good point, but I think just in general, I am not, there be dragons here, and I'd rather just invalidate page cache in everything for the byte range that we're going to mess with and like you do odirect, like you don't get the fancy sharing stuff. And I think that's okay, right? Because odirect applications are gonna be specialized anyway. Like, I, I, I don't see a problem with going the extra mile to evict cache from the read cache in the case of odirect reads or writes. Yeah, but that would also mean that we would have to translate before, which is fine, I believe, because we, with, with direct IO will be translating from file offsets to disk anyways. But yes, I think it, it makes sense, yes. Yeah, I, I think it's actually a little easier than that. For direct I.O., you just ignore the, the cache mapping completely and you read directly into whatever pages the application asked you to. Yeah, you don't really the only th only special case would be for writes, and at the point that we know what byte number we're writing to, we can just invalidate that range for a O direct write. Um, it's reasonable. Right. You ac actually don't have to because you're for writes, you're using the inode you're not using the shared inode, you're using the, the right inode, whatever you want to call it. The read cache won't be stale because the write is going to a different block completely. Because you're... Oh, I guess we'll evict writes. I, in my head, we're just like always keeping the read cache. But I guess if we evict or like unlink and reallocate it, we'll evict the read cache at that point. Yeah, I, I think the part I'm not explaining well is when you're writing, you're not overwriting the shared block you're writing to something new because you've done cal. Right. So you don't have to worry about invalidating the shared block because right. that's not where your data is going. Yeah, so yeah, if it is cal, it's a simple, but when it comes to no cal, then you'll have to eventually evict something. Don't do this with no cal. Make okay. your life yeah. easy. Okay. Yeah. No, but if, if there's, so with ButterFS, you can have something like file-specific no cal, then how do we handle that? File specific no cal breaks the sharing when you write to it. So if you snapshot and then and then if you snapshot a no cal, it's shared, yes, but when you write to it, it cows at that point because we can't write into a shared no cal region. 
So that'll trigger the no cow, and then the second write will be no cow. Oh, that, sorry. The write on the shared no cow region will trigger a cow anyway, and then the second write will be no cow, so. Okay. How, how about uh, uh, cleanup? I mean, when yeah. you're breaking uh, this mapping, you can end up with a block pointing to nothing. I mean, is that a, an issue? Or? Yeah, so yes, that is another question I've raised that when do we flush the read cache pages? So like when the file is closed, it, does it still stay in memory? So of course, if it is shared, it is always possible that it's, some other files are trying to access it, all we, or it may access it in the future. So in that case, do we flush it when the inode is evicted or uh, keep yeah. it for later? Uh, I mean, I think for the beginning, we just don't manually flush anything. We let um, the MM evict pages for us. I mean, this is the same thing we have with the B-tree inode, right? So like it's, we just have pages sitting there. Now we have the benefit of like forcing the MM to invalidate pages when we free blocks that we know we're not using anymore. And we could definitely implement a scheme like that for this. But at the beginning, like we're not going to OM because the MM is going to come in and tell us to invalidate and evict pages. So. So and when OM comes, we that's the first to go. Read cache is the first to go. Yeah. Well, so I, I would say we we need to be sure, like once we actually write in the private inode address space, that we invalidate those pages in the shared address space, because now we've made a cache alias here. And uh, when we've written to the private inode address space, like we've, we need to kill the cache alias. Am I making sense? Uh, but what about like if there are actual shared extents, like if there is a reference right, to another file altogether? Right. Which so is in, in this case, what's happened is we had a shared extent. We read it into the cache. Uh, that shared extent was deleted because all the snapshots went away. Uh, but we still have the cache there. And we need to delete that cache alias before we write to it. Right. So Chris, what, what I was thinking is that you would actually have one of these special inodes per extent. And so you, if, if it's gone away, then you delete that inode and the normal stuff happens. So we, I mean, we can definitely do this. Like we know when we free the extent, right? So like we can go and at that point do the, the, do the same magic we do with our metadata, right? Like, okay, we freed this extent. Now we punch a hole in our mapping for this range and now we don't have the aliasing problem. So do you mean to say we use a shared, ex or a shared inode for each shared extent? How expensive are your inodes, man? What, 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 <laughs> That'd why, be pretty. Right, why, why I mean, isn't an, isn't an inode basically free? Yeah. <laughs> the extents can be as small as 4K. So I, I don't think on a you know, multi-terabyte file system we want one inode per 4K. Well, I mean, you don't want you don't want to, you don't want extents that small either. I mean, you know, that that, that that's always the the challenge, right? Is how, well, how yeah. big do you? But so I, I like the idea of like the one address space per file system that uses the logical address space. That that was what I had in my head too. Um, uh, spoken like a man who doesn't understand how bad the radix tree is. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's also why you know the initial question of should we use this for every single read, regardless of whether or not they're sharing. I would tend to say probably not. I, I would tend to use the private inode address space as much as we possibly can and fall back into this for the shared case. Right. Yeah, I mean, and these are implementation details that are going to be mostly specific to ButterFS. The, this you'd is, be surprised. What? Uh, I mean, you'd, you'd be surprised. I, I, I've, I've been looking at this for XFS as well, and right. almost everything you're saying has some parallel in XFS. Uh, there's, there's details here, but the, the broad strokes of what you're saying, you could be talking about XFS. Right, so uh, I guess what I should say is these are file system specific implementation details that are gonna look broadly the same across file systems, and they're, these are easy, because the hard part is how do we make the MM break the sharing? So one of the things that Roman has done, has said, is like having, you know, you have like essentially stacked mappings, right? You go to read, you go to check the read cache or whatever, and now you link it in. And this is the problem now is that you have a page linked into two different mappings, right? But, well, so 
Roman's idea is that we just like return the read page and we don't actually like link it into the thing. But then mmap gets kind of screwed up here because you can't really like mmap, you can't map the read cache page into the the process, right? Yeah. And so this because you 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 get your file system gets called on write fault. Yeah. Right. So at that point, you know that you need to allocate a page in the private eye node. Right. So like at MK write time, yes. MK write. Yeah. But like a read map, like and then the problem is is the problem we talked about earlier is we can get uh, get user pages and not tell the file system <laughs> and mess with my read cache thing that's supposed to be read only and not be told until way later. But we have full write. So at the, at the time where you see a full write, cow then. Okay. I have to make sure this is working because like I said, we have a bunch of ma machinery in place to like catch this and I know it still happens. So like if I need to be doing something in Butterfest to make sure that uh, this that particular path can't happen, then hooray, I'll look into that. But there's some real question about what do we do with a page that we want to essentially share across multiple mappings and how do we make sure that the cow happens whenever we got right to it through a specific write path, which I think is easier. But then like how do we map it and then how do we reclaim it properly when we have a bunch of inodes that are referencing it? Because we only have one eye mapping or mapping. Oh, th th this sounds like a great opportunity for Willie. Please put up that slide you were working on earlier. Yes. <laughs> okay. So yeah, 